the long-term consequences of juvenile alcohol consumption are terrifying in their scope and magnitude. You know, I started drinking when I was um, 12 or 13, you know, when I say started drinking, I had that first full bottle experience where you drink a whole drink to yourself. In this case, it was uh, two or three whole drinks. Um, and I, I had some sort of experiences throughout my teenage years where I would drink, but not much uh, because money. You know, my parents didn't really drink a lot, so there wasn't a great supply of alcohol in the house, you know, not stuff that would go missing and I couldn't stand spirit, so um, that was a no-no. Um, and it wasn't until I really stepped across that magical age of 18, you know, when you become a man, you know, you can drink, you can smoke, you can um, watch porn, you can fight in wars. That I really started to, to drink, I had my own money, we go out to pubs, all that kind of stuff. The reality is, at 18 you're still a child, you're not fully developed, you're not capable of making those decisions yet. Your frontal lobe, that part of your brain responsible for your decision making, problem solving, spontaneity, judgment and particularly your impulse control, isn't fully developed until you're about 25. Until then, all these crucial cognitive abilities are only in the developmental stage. And while you're patiently waiting for your logical brain to develop, it's a part of your brain called the amygdala that takes on a lot of the responsibility. This is the part of your brain that's essential for feeling certain emotions and perceiving them in others. So, you know, those connections between the emotional part of the brain and the logical part of the brain, you know, the, one, the ones that help us to make the right decisions, to make the right choices, to see, um, you know, to, to be able to judge where we're going, with a, a bit more fluidity. They're not made yet, you know, they haven't been connected at that age. So, you know, the decisions that we make are gonna be flawed. So most of our thinking is actually feeling. Now, I'm not sure when I started um, thinking about drinking alcohol, you know, uh, in, in contrast to actually drinking alcohol. I'd say it was a lot earlier. You know, if you think about it, anything that, the people around you are doing um, is going to be fodder for uh, something that you will think about doing yourself, especially when that something is associated with fun or fun times. You know, you see the parents doing something, you see your siblings, older siblings doing something, you see your uncles and aunties, your grandparents, you know, your mum and dad's friends, you know, people around you, people on the TV, advertisements, and it just looks fun. You know, unless you are uh, in a situation where you're seeing aggression coming out with alcohol, but you might not relate the two things. Um, so, you really do start drinking or thinking about drinking earlier, a lot earlier than you actually start drinking. According to some research, children begin thinking positively about alcohol between 9 and 13. It's a somber thought that for most children, by nine years of age, alcohol has become a normalized part of their lives. Alcohol drinking then turns into an inevitability, an impending part of their natural maturing. With so much positive influence about alcohol surrounding our children, it's easy to see how so many children become indoctrinated. It's not if our children will start using alcohol, but when. It always felt like that for me. You know, there was never any doubt in my mind that I would start drinking. Um, it wasn't a question of, of would I do this, it was when I was going to do this. And there was never a natural fear attached to trying alcohol for the first time for me. Maybe a nervousness about what it would taste like or what it would feel like to be drunk, but it doesn't have the same natural fear as we'd associate with other drugs. It just felt like this was an inevitable progression right to adulthood. And the alcohol companies just love that, the fact that alcohol use has become normalised. The younger a child starts using alcohol, the more likely they are to develop an alcohol drinking habit, a dependence, a problem. You know, look back at when you started drinking yourself. It seemed like a natural progression, right? You know, from being a child into a man. You know, my son, 
um, now he's an adult and he ta talks to me about some of the things that he did that he considered to be not right when he was younger or sneaking off was you know he told me that uh, he started drinking a long time before I knew you know he's the same way as I did I don't think my parents knew anything about my early drinking escapades you know because the first time I drank we were we were in a, we were smart enough we were in situations where we would be sleeping somewhere else overnight so we could you know we wouldn't get the smell of the alcohol even at that early age you knew um, that your parents would smell it off your breath so you couldn't really um, stand in front of them um, after you've been drinking and not get caught you know it's the same thing with smoking I started smoking earlier but I even bought my son his first uh, legal pint you know on his 18th birthday I was the first one to take him to a pub and I was really proud of that and that shows you um, another level of normalization you wouldn't do this with any other drug you know and it's just with alcohol that it seems to be um, we have this maybe years ago it was something with smoking I don't know I, I would never have thought that when I saw my son smoking for the first time it was I felt terrible you know um, because I really knew the dangers and the, the, the long-term consequences of that you know it's it's quite bizarre and nonsensical really how we have this arbitrary dividing line between what is normal drinking uh, and what becomes problem drinking or um, what becomes somebody who has um, a dependency on alcohol or a problem with alcohol or is an alcoholic you know who defines these things almost certainly people who drink anyway underage alcohol use can lead to a lifetime of chaos Young brains are highly susceptible to negative and potentially devastating consequences. Globally, alcohol misuse was the fifth leading factor for premature death and disability. Among people between the ages of 15 and 49, it's the first. In the age group between 20 and 39 years, approximately 25% of total deaths are attributable to alcohol. That's astounding. The long-term consequences of juvenile alcohol consumption are terrifying in their scope and magnitude. Sadly, um, children and teenagers and young adults are easily persuaded and the alcohol companies are spending billions trying to influence and persuade our children's minds. And it's easy to see how um, you know, kids get influenced by by all this stuff. You know, it's there's ample evidence, there's ample solid evidence to show that these alcohol companies are advertising to our children. But you know, you don't need that. All you have to do is open up your own eyes and look for yourself. If you would like uh, help to quit drinking alcohol, I've got something that um, I'd like to give you for free. It's my new book, Ten Steps to Stop Drinking Alcohol for Good. Um, it's over on the website, all you have to do is click on the link down below this video to get started. There's a lot of good information in there, a lot of tips just to get you to that start line and across the start line with confidence that you can do this. So, as I said, click on the link down below this video to get started. Take care, onwards and upwards.